Aloha. Hi, everyone. So you can see I'm in a new background. This is my little my little altar. And i am got family here right now. So I moved some things around in my own space so that more of us could sit in our living room and enjoy like evening movies and stuff. So I'm in my big wide open great space and uh, it might have a little different of a sound and it may have a different of a light. So bear with me today. And um, I'm just grateful you're all here. Uh, I actually have a confession to make. So um, in my meditations today, I'm kind of like feeling a little like fatigued, a little tired, a little worn out. And uh, I realized, you know, I fill a lot of my space. And I don't know about you, but I sometimes have a hard time just being still and just being quiet. And I think that's what attracted me to yoga over the years is that I really try to, I guess, fill up space, you know, empty space, whether it's, you know, with words and talking or with schedule, like being staying busy or whether it's just like, you know, chattering all day long, <laughs> you know, with my little daughter or whatever. So I'm finding that, you know, um, taking the silent space and, and taking time to just practice quiet and practice stillness and practice listening instead of filling up space is such an important part of my life and an important part of my, my healing practice. And, um, and so today we're going to go slow. We're going to do a lot of Acu yoga today, and we're going to do a lot of mudras today. And that's kind of like our practice as a subtle, energetic, um, they call them hastas or hand, hand movements. So all your fingers represent planets. They represent different energies. And today we're going to use our fingers and our hands to do all kinds of different mudras to help us like kind of rebalance our energies. So the first one that I have is going to start us in legs up the wall pose. So I want you to find a wall nearby where you can swing your legs up. If you don't have a wall nearby, grab a chair and use your chair as your prop for legs up the wall pose. And then, um, and then if you have something to place underneath your head, place something underneath your head so you have a soft place to land. I'll be continuing with the Gayatri Mantra today. So this is just really helping us learn to incorporate this very deep healing and unifying mantra into our lives, into our practice. I know the more I heard it when I first learned it, better it was to kind of get into my system. So we're going to practice softness and we're going to practice stillness and we're going to practice coming home to listening inside of ourselves. So go ahead and take your legs up the wall the best you know how to. And we're relieving ourselves of any complaints, any chatter, any unnecessary energy output so that our bodies can come into and recalibrate. When we come into the stillness and the silence, something we often crave, but we don't give ourselves. And if you're like me and you're addicted to staying busy and doing things, this is the antithesis of that. So it may be uncomfortable, yet it is something our bodies appreciate and need more than ever. So our first mudra is called Pushan Mudra. And Pushan Mudra is dedicated to the sun god. It's the god of nourishment. So on your right hand, you'll take the tips of your thumb and index finger and middle finger all on top of each other, okay? 
So the other fingers are just extended. Your ring and pinky are just extended. So this is on your right hand and you're placing your index and middle finger right on top of your thumb. Okay. And you can turn it up like you're holding a flower. And then on your left hand, you're gonna take the tips of your thumb and middle finger and ring finger together. Same kind of feeling, you're pressing those two middle fingers into your thumb on your left hand and you let the other fingers extend, okay? So on our right hand, our pinky and our ring finger are extended, the other fingers are connected. And on our left, the middle, two fingers middle and ring are connecting to the thumb, index and pinky are extended. So just relax there with your hands in the mudra. And you can place your hands wherever they're comfortable for you. And just begin some deep breathing. This mudra symbolizes accepting and receiving with the gesture of one hand and letting things flow, give, and let go in the gesture of the other hand. Both are coordinated with each other to help with digestion. And this is influencing our energy currents that are responsible for absorbing and utilizing the food we take in as well as helping with elimination. Also, this helps, this mudra helps us with deep breathing. It has a relaxing effect on the solar plexus, helps us absorb oxygen and release carbon dioxide from the lungs. It has an effect on acute nausea, seasickness, gas, and any sensation of fullness after a meal. So you can imagine all the various benefits you're taking in through this subtle hand gesture. Allow yourself to rest as you're here. Our affirmation to begin today is I thankfully accept everything that is good for me. I let it have its effect within me and I release everything that is spent.
your inhalation. Take an energy in the form of light. Join the time and space to be with you. During animation, we let that expended energy flow back right out of you. With every breath, there is more light and clarity in your physical and mental emotional realms. I thankfully accept everything that is good for me. Let it have its effect within me and release everything that is spent. Taking a deep breath in and out. Staying with the affirmation. I thankfully accept everything that is good for me. I let it have its positive effect within me. And I release everything that is spent. When you feel yourself accepting this beautiful healing that's available to you in your practice today, with your legs up the wall resting, the gentleness you're calling in, with a deeper healing of this yogic practice to all realms of your existence, to all realms within you, physical, emotional, the mental and the spiritual, all the parts that make you up on the inside. Yet energetically, we also expand. We know we exist beyond this body and into the space above our skin, into the field around us. We claim our place and space is worthy and valuable in the here and now. May this time be healing for us. And with your next breath, you can release your mudra. You can spread your hands out. You can shake them or twirl at your wrists a couple times. And then draw your knees into your chest. So you're letting your knees hover in above your belly. And if you can, just push yourself away from your wall just a little bit. We'll take our twists here. So it's gonna compress our legs a little bit deeper than usual. So you can always check and see if you need to kind of pull more away from the wall or if you're okay there, kind of close to it. So let your knees fall to the right. 
and let your head and neck turn to the left. So just roll your head to the left as your knee is stacked on the right. And then you can extend your arms out in a T along the floor, but let your shoulders relax. So your head is looking opposite of your knees, as long as that's comfortable for your head and neck. Our next mudra is a bronchial mudra. We're using it to release um, our lungs and help us be able to take even deeper breaths and move any congestion or stagnant energy away from the re respiratory system. So we do this on both hands and you actually place the little finger at the base of your thumb. Okay, so little finger to the base of your thumb the ring finger goes to the crease just above or just below, I guess, the pad of your thumb. And your middle finger comes to the top of your thumb. Your index finger stays up. So what we're doing is we're getting kind of our, our fingers to stack against the thumb, except the index finger stays up. Okay. So you're going to do that on both hands as you extend the arms out for the twist. And just take some deep breaths here. That little finger, it sometimes may be hard to get that pressure there. So just as long as it's resting there, you wanna kind of feel those fingers connect to your thumbs. It doesn't have to be really pushing, but you wanna feel the connection. So this also um, works for inner loneliness. Sometimes the reason why we may fill up space is because there's something inside of us that makes us feel alone. And so this helps with balancing out any deeper sadness we're carrying. It helps to relieve any loneliness in our heart center. You're gonna let your shoulders drop back and really allow yourself not to feel pressed for time. Just really allow yourself the space and the time to receive and de-stress and really allow the breath into you. And if any sort of negative feelings or judgments arise, it's our time to just look at that and then let it go. We can get into those habits of saying things to ourselves that negate our well being. So we change those thoughts. We use every breath gives me strength instead. Every breath gives me strength. I'm strengthening my body. I'm strengthening my mind. I'm strengthening my heart. Continue to hold the mudra. We'll change sides for our twist, taking a big inhale. Help the legs come up to center, either using the wall for support or using your belly muscles. You can even turn your hands down and push the floor as you bring your legs up. Then flip the palms back around, still holding the mudra, dropping the legs off to the left and turning the head to roll to the right. And once again, you're just allowing yourself this very deep, precious time to renew and restore subtly, physically. Especially now opening the lungs, respiration. Anything arises like waves on the surface of the water, they pass, they ripple and they pass again. Let the breath stay strong. Feel each breath as a reservoir of strength that comes from within you and ripples 
beyond your heart, beyond your belly, into your arms and to your pelvis, and into your spine. His strength. Every breath strengthens my body, my mind, my the weight of your body against the earth, you sink in even deeper for this last minute here. So you can just extend that index finger a little more, feeling the curling of your fingers at your thumb, soft jaw and throat, soft scalp, soft muscles of the face, With your next breath in, pressing your hands down, I can uncurl your hands, push the floor with your hands as you return your knees back up to center line and pause there for a moment. You can even wrap your arms around your legs and give yourself a little soft rock from side to side. And take your time as you come back to a seated position. Take as much time as you need. Roll to your favorite side. You can even turn so you're sitting with your back up against the wall for this first stage of our return back up to sitting. So I have another confession to make while you're getting here. I really find that more and more I need my yoga practice as my, my healing practice, as my therapeutic practice, because you know I can do different things for my body as far as like what I eat, right? And how I walk around every day in the world and the attitudes I have. But when it comes to these um, techniques we have, the the Acu Yoga, the, the mudras, these are all ways that we have self healing at our fingertips, literally. So that's what we're kind of seeing today is that we're seeing how like just being still and letting go and kind of nourishing and feeding ourselves with these subtle energy flows can really help to change the programming on the deeper levels of our, our cellular being. And so with this next movement, um, let's sit with our, you know, just easy sitting pose with our legs just gently crossed in front of us. We only have one more mudra before we do some other um, Acu Yoga pressure points. Um, this particular mudra is called Vajra Mudra. We're going to use it actually to do some self massage. And um, I'm working, I've been working out of this mudra book for a while. This is a mudra book we use for our. Um, our advanced yoga teacher training, yoga for your hands. 
And uh, it's one of those books that has, you know, a ton of different ideas, ways to, to use mood as healing techniques. I highly recommend it. For now, um, that Vajra Mudra, you know, we just did that. That Mudra was here with the index finger out. We're going to keep the index finger out, but we're going to now take all of those fingers to the thumb, keeping that. So just all the tips of the fingers connecting. Okay. So for this one, we're going to use our index finger to massage at the base of our skull. So GB20, it's actually right where, almost like your skull has sitting bones, right? You wanna get right into the skull, the base of your skull and those little sitting bones at the base of your skull. Use your index fingers, you're holding your mudra. And this Vajra mudra is called the gesture of the fiery thunderbolt. So you're using your index finger as sort of your thunderbolt and you're getting it in there. So really rub good along the base of your skull. Good, and then let's massage at the root of the nose. So right here. So massage the root of your nose. It's also, you're massaging your upper lip and upper jaw. So massage there. Try not to make any weird faces. You don't have to stretch your jaw or make a smile. It's massaging right there under your nose. Good, and then let's go ahead and massage the forehead, center of the forehead, right where your third eye is. Massage with your index finger. So we're really helping to strengthen our circulatory system. We're kind of getting rid of any tension that might be held in the sinus cavity, massaging the center of the forehead, base of the skull, and root of the nose. We've got two more spots. The nape of your neck now. So right here, the nape of your neck above your collarbones. Just massaging in there. Good. Just gentle enough so you're not pressing too hard. You don't want it to be too uncomfortable. You might find that there, there's some tight spots in there. Just imagine you're massaging all of those tight spots away. A couple more times. And now you're going to do it on the reverse on the back of the neck. This one's the harder one if you want to keep that mudra in your hands. Base of the neck, tops of the shoulders, nape of the neck. So nape of the neck, tops of the shoulders. And this helps with any emotional fatigue. I mean, all of us are experiencing that due to the pandemic this year and all the different changes we've had in our lifestyle. So you can always remember you can do this mudra and you can do any of these massage points to help recirculate your energy. And I'm sure you're already starting to feel a difference because I am. <laughs> Good. All right, let's release our hands, open the palms wide, make fists, open the palms wide, fingers wide, turn the palms open, make fists, turn them in, and then clasp the hands, interlocking the fingers, all of them, push the palms of the hands forward, and then bring them up all the way overhead. Good. Push the ceiling, get a little longer and stronger through your spine. Breathe in and out, feel your lungs expand, feel your rib cage move. Let your shoulders be away from the base of your neck and ears, shoulder blades down your back, soft little smile in your mouth, jaw relax. Good. Release your right hand down to the floor, just to the right of you. 
and take a little side bend. And stretching your whole entire left side. If you want, you can walk your hand out a little further and hang your head. Take a few breaths. Good. Inhale, come all the way up, stretch the arms up and overhead. And exhale, drop your left hand down to the floor and let your right arm move overhead. Very good. Take another breath or two here. As you do, stretch the whole side body reaching through. Make your right sitting bone heavy. You can even give a little gentle pressure to your hand that's at the floor, pushing out through the side of your body. And deepening it, let it feel good. Inhale, coming all the way back up, change the crossing of your legs. So if you've had the legs this way, change them that way. If you had one leg on top, bring the other leg on top. Grab hold of the shins or the knees and just start a little circling over the hips and you can let your legs move up and down. You want to round and curl your back as you move, get all the kinks and pops out. Opening and closing the spine, pressing the chest forward, pushing the chest back, spiraling over your sitting bones, feeling how the hips are opening, sits bones connecting. Good, and let's circle all the way through to the center, make little baby circles at center. Feel the subtlety of the sitting bones as you circle really small baby circles and then turn around and spiral back out again in the opposite direction. Good. So you may feel any lumps or bumps where your hips connect with the floor. We're massaging those out at the base of the spine. Breathing in, breathing out. Rounding and curling the spine, letting the head and neck go with you. Big inhale, soaking up the breath, let it feel good. I enjoy this present day with joy in my heart. Returning to that joy that's innate in us. Spiraling slowly back to center. Let yourself just stir center for a few moments, feeling the bowl of your pelvis like a pot of gold. And you're just stirring the spine over your pelvis, those teeny tiny little stirs. And then slowly come to silence right at the center. Take a breath or two here. Feeling any new pulses of energy and awakening in the spine, in the heart space, in the head. Grow a little taller through your spine with your next inhalation. And then as you exhale, lean back on your hands and send your legs wide. Okay, so have your legs wide here. And we'll come forward this time. So what I want you to do is imagine that from your hips down, everything's going to stay in place. So as we're working, we're just tipping the belly and the chest over the front of our mat. You can take your hands to the floor in front of you and walk them out. Imagine a fiery glowing ball in your pelvis and with every inhalation that fireball grows brighter. You can imagine it climbing up your spine, awakening, warming, clearing the heart, back door of the heart, front door of the heart, up through the throat, clearing, clearing with each breath, removing any impurities. I think we reflect back on the niyama called shaucha. Shaucha is purity and cleanliness. We let that fireball grow from the pelvis up through the spine, clearing and cleaning all the way up to the back of the skull, all the way into the crown of your head, letting your vitality return 
warming your heart, illuminating your mind. Several deep breaths here, all in. You need to let out any exhalations, little vocal release. Clear it out. On your next inhale, walk the hands back up towards you. And we'll turn so we're face down, belly down for child's pose. So you can set something underneath your hips if you need to. We're working mostly right now with some acupressure points on the face, particularly around the eyes. So we're gonna focus on the art of seeing. And sometimes what happens when you experience eye problems um, is that you begin to feel not only that blurry vision is about the actual eyes feeling blurred, but about your internal vision being blurred. So all these points that we're working on help us to release emotional stress from the eyes. So if you have a hard time like crying, sometimes that helps to cleanse the eyes, these acupressure points. Um, there's bladder points here, there's gallbladder points and stomach points here that we're gonna be working with. So start by just, when you're sitting back on your heels, start by taking the heels of your hands and just gently pressing them into that arc of your eyeball. So what's gonna happen is you're probably gonna, depending on how much you press, and of course you don't wanna press too hard, especially if you have pressure problems in your eyes, but you might feel the darkness come through and little teeny lights that you'll see as you pressurize the eyes, just ever so slightly. So you're gonna let this happen for about a minute. As long as it feels okay for you, try to still your eyes. Breathing in, breathing out, feeling your ribs move with your breath, feeling your belly release with your breath. On your inhales, you're gonna fill up. On your exhales, you're gonna squeeze and pull the navel back, maybe even pull the pelvic floor in. Letting your hands Release any tension from the back of the eyes. It's a little yin yoga for the eyes. Good, release that and then it over. If you want, you can just rest your head down on the floor or on a block. You can also roll in a little blanket to help rest your head or a bolster and if the discomfort is happening in the backs of the legs or feet you can take a block underneath you or you can take a blanket underneath you and rest the tops of your feet or thighs between so just resting here Okay, so sit up from here, sit back on your blanket or a block if you need it. We're still working with the eyes. You're gonna make little fists now. I'm gonna take the knuckles right around the underbrow area. So you wanna push up against the bone of your brow just lightly enough so you get that stimulation at the brow and kind of curl your knuckles just under that arc, upper arc of your eye, base of your forehead, right around your brow line. And you're just giving it a little gentle pressure, breathing deep. So one of the things that I experience a lot is sinus pain and congestion and pressure, especially if the weather changes or you know, if I just didn't eat the right things in a day, sometimes that can cause it. So when I find ways to relieve my sinus pressure and pain that's without taking any, you know, over-the-counter medicine, then that really is a joy for me. So this is one of the 
postures that actually helps me to release any sinus pressure or pain. To clear this really well. All right, so let's do the next under the cheekbones. So get it, find your knuckles against your cheekbones here, right? Right around kind of the base of your nose, same thing. You're pressing in and just holding that pressure at the base of your cheekbone. Breathing and filling your lungs, sitting tall. You can even kind of roll your hands along the cheekbones a couple times if you'd like, spreading your elbows out. It gets all those little points there. Two points, particular stomach one, stomach two, right around here. Of course, as you do this, you can even work some eye circles so you can look up, down, to the right, and to the left. Good, up with your eyes, not with your head, down with your eyes, massaging under the cheekbones, over to the right, over to the left, and then to the middle, pause, press, take a big breath in, sigh it out, and then release that. Our last is the temples. Okay, right up by the eyes. And we can come back down into our child's pose again, kind of propped up on our elbows and just pressing the knuckles gently into the temples and massaging if you'd like here or just holding the pressure. Either way is fine. So when you're doing this, we call it yoga mudra. And as we kneel and let our, if we can get our toes now to touch each other, right? Big toes to touch. Let your inhales be deep. And again, you're just breathing and continuing. Getting into, this is gallbladder one on the outside of the eye near the temple. Clearing and cleansing. Holding and breathing. And relaxing your jaw. Notice how maybe there might be some tension in the jaw as well. So let the lower jaw relax. One more breath here. Awesome, everyone. Release and come forward onto your belly. So might have to adjust your blanket behind you so it's out of your way. Or if you're like me and you want a little extra padding underneath your hips, we're coming into some cobras or seal poses actually in the yin tradition. And place your blankets so you have a little extra padding underneath your hips, your pubic bone, and your pelvis. Good. So we're going to come here with the feet behind us and then take your body all the way down flat against the earth. Close your eyes and rest. So give yourself a few moments just to kind of take in the, the medicine that we just received around our eyes. Let the eyes be calm and relaxed. All those ridges and meridians in our eyes have now been opened. Some of the benefits from what we just did is it relieves eye strain, liver and gallbladder imbalances. Also helps to relieve neck tension and nervous disorders. All those beautiful points. And you can lift your head up and just turn your head in the other direction. 
Be here just another 30 to 45 seconds, relaxing completely. If you'd like your arms down by your sides, totally giving all your weight to the earth. So a lot of my, my um, other challenges have been with the sinus pressure come headaches. So any kind of headaches that you experience, whether they're migraine or sinus related, um, not drinking enough water, hydration, which by the way, if you'd like to do that now, go ahead and do so. And what happens is you get this stagnation, right? You get the stagnation of energy through the body. So this next set of poses from our belly really helps to take the stagnation out of our stomach, out of our belly, out of our pelvis and hips and spine, and helps to utilize the connection to the meridian system, the energy system of the body to um, you know, relieve that stagnation. So uh, we'll do a little bit more massaging too while we're here. Um, with my headaches tend to be a little bit of neck tension, like base of the skull around the neck. And sometimes for me that there's no particular thing that causes it. Maybe it's the way I'm sleeping at night, or maybe it's just that, um, you know, that's my sensitive area. But if you're experiencing neck tension, this is another way to relieve it. So you're gonna lie with your feet about hips distance apart or a little wider, even as wide as your mat if you'd like. Again, taking the knuckles of your hands at the base of your skull. And you're just gonna massage with your knuckles the base of your skull. Notice I'm raising my head up a little bit. Good, so from here, let the legs start to raise. Good, so you're getting that, your backside to turn on, you're getting your pelvic floor to turn on. And now if you feel ready, you can come up and you're pressing your head into the knuckles, right? So you just use this to keep your neck long, lift and spread your elbows, pull up on your belly. We only have to be here for a little bit. So just let this energy be pressure back through the back of the head into the knuckles, lifting through the hips, lifting, I'm sorry, lifting through the heels, lifting through the legs. See if you can get in another couple moments. Pressing and holding, reaching and lengthening, and now totally rest completely. Give all your weight to the earth. Feel your breath come into your upper back between your shoulder blades. Good, one more time, I'm gonna take the Knuckles of the hands, you can prop yourself up first on your elbows, give yourself a little massage at the base of your skull, top of your neck. Do the same with the legs, start to raise the toes, the feet, the lower legs up. Squeeze the pubic bone down into the floor. Good, press the back of your head into your knuckles, float your head up, spread your elbows, pull your belly in, pull your pelvic floor in. This is as much as that activity we're going to get today. So really feel that push, feel that length of your spine, like a little shalabhasana, a little uh, expansion through the chest, lengthen through the neck, a reach through the toes behind you, belly drawing in, pelvic floor drawing in, exhale, release, turn your head in the other direction and rest completely. Hopefully you felt some little adjustments in your neck as you rested. Get into your upper back. Slide your hands down so they're underneath your shoulders. Slowly push up into your favorite version of Cobra, or if you'd like, walk the hands out, take seal pose. And we're just gonna be here for about 40, 
40 to 60 seconds. Remember, we're working these postures therapeutically, so these are all ways for us to complete both the yin benefits for this one and it's any bladder meridian. And then also we're relieving pressure in the head, the neck, the shoulders that might cause any headaches or sinus. We're just feeling the lungs expand and open with each breath. If you need to come down and make this pose smaller, feel free. I'm gonna stay here in seal pose, really allowing that stimulation of the spine. Legs are laying against the earth, pubic bones pressing, but not firmly. We want to let the booty stay fairly relaxed. If the low back kind of gets a little kinky, you could bring the chest forward and come down onto the forearms and elbows, kind of spreading length along the upper back and shoulders to release. And when you're ready to come all the way down, just lower all the way down to your forehead. Touch your forehead, curl your toes under, press the hands down, come into table position. You can walk your knees up a little bit, make sure your hands are directly under your shoulders, keeping the toes curled under for now. Give yourself a little gentle, slow cat-cow movement. Pushing out on your exhale, rounding the spine, doming your belly. On inhale, fanning out the tail feathers, letting the heart space expand forward. Belly long, good. Keep going through those three or four more rounds. Rocking the spine, rocking the pelvis. And then take some free flow here if you'd like. So you may want to wag your tail from side to side or barrel roll your spine. And then we'll all come back for a little tricky cat movement. So balancing from the center. So pause here, spread out your fingers, take your left leg back, flex your foot so your toes turn down, and then take your right arm forward. You're just letting your head extend through the crown. So you're not looking forward, just looking kind of a couple inches up above your fingers that are on the floor. So a couple inches along your mat. And then when you feel ready, reach back with your right hand, bend your left knee. See if you can find your foot. And this is when you can tip your head up. So push your foot into your hand, tip your head up, allow your spine to open here. On your inhale, stretch back out. Exhale, lower down. Changing sides. Left leg is, right leg's gonna go back. Left knee is on the ground, flexing the foot. Leveling the hips as you extend your left arm out along by your ear. So reaching through the sole of your foot, reaching through your fingers, drawing up and in through the belly. Feeling the elongation of the front body connecting back. Reaching back through the left arm, bending the right knee, finding your foot if you can. Next phase, if you'd like, press into your foot. Lift your heart. Little half bow pose, opposite arm, opposite leg working. 
Connecting the right and left sides. Inhale, stretch it back out. Reach and release. Side, start. start to sit your heels. You can stay here for a few moments, kind of rocking your hips from side to side, stretching your arms long. And we're due for another little twist. So come back up to all fours. Take your left arm, slide it underneath your right. Lower your shoulder down. Notice I got my hips over my knees. Right arm can come up and wrap around for a shoulder stretch. Head is relaxing. If you want to get another balancing pose here, keeping your toes curled under, just let the right hand come down to the floor. Take your right leg and let it float up. Finding a little balance as you twist the upper body. Lower your right knee down, press into your right hand, uncurl your left arm out from underneath you, pause. Changing sides, take your right arm, slide it underneath. I'm gonna have to turn, <laughs> slide it underneath. Drop your right shoulder on the ground, right side of your head on the ground. Let your both hands and arms help get you into the twist. Once you feel content with your spine, where your knees are in support, can take your left arm to float and wrap around for a little shoulder stretch, three or four breaths. Bringing out any tension from the spine. And shoulders getting a nice Squeeze a lot, nice expansion, especially through the front of the chest. If you'd like to extend that left hand back to the floor. Hold the left hand at the floor. Let it be kind of your shelf of balance. Let your left knee come off the ground. Let your left leg float up. So it's a little variation on fallen angel pose. Just letting the arms and the action of the stability of your legs help you feel that floating sensation away from the earth. Nice, everyone. Take a nice breath in and out. Really expand and grow spacious if you can. Exhale, lower down. Land lightly with control. Left hand presses as you untuck the right arm. Very nice. Oh, that felt good. Inhale and exhale a couple times to cat cow. And bringing the inner groins together. So take the knees to touch, take the ankle bones to touch. Good, so you're back in table. This time, take your right leg up to the sky and then across to the left side outside of your mat and then look over your left shoulder for a side body stretch. Inhale, reach that right leg up, lower it down, take the left straight back, bring it all the way to the left side of your mat as far as you can. I'm sorry, right side of your mat, look over your right shoulder. So left leg over to the right. Good, inhale, lift up and exhale, bring them back in. Sit back on your heels, shake out your hands and wrists a couple times. And hopefully everybody is feeling better already. We got just a few more poses to do before we close out today. 
So come onto your back and place your feet on the ground with your knees bent. Feet on the ground with your knees bent. It may be Be helpful to have a um, block handy within reach. So I'm going to lay back, have a little extra padding for the back of my head here. This is a shoulder releasing pose. We're also going to do this pose with a mudra. But before we do, just relax with your hands down along your side. Walk your feet in so you have about an inch or two um, distance between your heel and your backside, but let your knees be above your heels. Just pause for a moment, closing your eyes. Just feeling the feet on the ground, feeling the earth on your back, feeling your energy drop into the earth. Just the first thing we'll, we'll do while we're here is we're gonna take our hands and fingers on our scalp. And we're gonna massage our scalp with our fingertips. You wanna get your fingers in around the scalp and you actually wanna move the skin around your scalp and head with your fingertips. So get in there pretty good. This is actually called drilling bamboo. <laughs> so you're just pressing your fingers into your scalp and massaging. We're gonna get in another 30 seconds here. Nice scalp massage. Keep pressing really good. Let it again feel good. We're stimulating all those points along the scalp and the head. We got bladder two, three and four, stomach six and eight. This is for a tired brain, uh, sinusitis, headache, eye tired, hay fever, headaches, block noses, um, burning heat in the head, tired eyes, jaw and neck tension headaches, pain above the eyelids. So, you know, good stuff, good stuff, getting all that. Give yourself an extra deep breath here as you continue to massage. Good, all right. So, rela release the scalp massage. I know it feels even better than ever, doesn't it? <laughs> Take your arms out at heart level. And now bringing your arms, right arm over the left. So you're laying down, you're stacking your arms, elbows over elbows, palms facing out. This is a shoulder releasing movement. Naturally, gravity is gonna bring your elbows either over your chin and face or down below it or somewhere in between. So just let your arms fall where they may and focus on relaxing the back door of your heart right between your two shoulder blades and softening where the, the deep muscles, rotator cuffs inside the joint of your shoulders where your humerus bone meets with that shoulder joint. Focus on relaxing that area there. As you do, we have Mukula Mudra. Mukula Mudra with your hands. So typically we let our hands just be relaxed. Today you're gonna make, uh, bring all your fingers to touch your thumbs, but just gently, just holding all your fingers to your thumbs, keeping your palms sort of facing out away from you. This is an energy giving, relaxing Mudra. You can actually place your hands when you have pain in your body. You can actually place your hands in this position and put your fingers wherever you feel pain in your body. And it actually helps to release and regenerate energy. 
to wherever you place the mudra. Allowing yourself to deeply soften jaw throat. The affirmation for this particular mudra is dirt out, <laughs> power in. It's releasing anything that is spent, just like in our first pose. Dirt out, power in. Very perfect for our theme this week of Shaucha, purification. Imagine as you breathe, you're massaging the deep rotator muscles in the shoulders with your breath. Final inhale and exhale here, really letting go. Perfect, now take your arms, open them back up. You can release your mudra. You can turn your palms down and then flip your palms up. Turn your palms down, like press them into the, press your fingers and hands into the floor and then turn your palms up and press your hands and fingers back into the floor. Just do that one more time, each direction, just to feel your whole entire upper arm to hand and finger connection, good. All right, we're gonna take the arms again to cross, this time left elbow over the right, turning the palms out. You might feel different on this side, it's pretty normal to get different experiences on each side. As you do, let the elbows just fall where they may, allowing yourself to relax any effort that you would normally put into this and just let them go. Again, you can take that Mukula Mudra bringing your fingertips to touch this time. If you feel like it, if it feels right, you can take your fingers somewhere along wherever they touch near your body and kind of electrically charge that area with your mudra. So we're here about three minutes, just relaxing and allowing ourselves to receive the medicine. I'm gonna put on a little
Everyone, so release your arms and uh, once again allow the arms to open like wings and stretch them long and straight and then again this time you're going to rotate at your shoulders turning the whole arm palm up thumbs back and then palm down, thumbs down, rolling, rolling, rolling. Do that a couple more times. Internally and externally rotating at your shoulders, your whole entire arms. I hear little sounds in there sometimes, ligaments rubbing on each other. It's totally normal, okay? A whole bunch of moving parts, right? All that fascia can get a little sticky in there. Just help massage that out, take a big breath in and out. And as you exhale, release your hands to your belly and just hold your belly for a few moments. With your eyes closed. You can extend your legs now out along the floor. So flat out, lay on your back. And as long as that feels comfortable for you with the legs straight out, otherwise you can keep your knees slightly bent. You can even place something underneath your knees for almost to Shavasana. Just have one more movement we're gonna do before Shavasana. So that movement is another neck cradle. And we do that from laying down on our back, if you can comfortably. Otherwise, like I said, have something like rolled up underneath your knees if needed. For now, just feel your belly rising and falling underneath your hands. We'll transfer our hand position to an interlock of the fingers and then take the hands back behind your head and literally like you're holding a baby's head, like a newborn's head. You're kind of bringing a nice shape along the back of your skull. You're going to hold and kind of pull and lengthen the neck up and out. Okay, so almost like you have like it's in like a little, don't hammock, right? So you're making a hammock shape with your hands. 
Now start to peel your head up off the floor just enough to where you can rest your head heavy in your hands and kind of give yourself a little decompression. I have my shoulder blades pushing the floor. If that feels good for you to do it, you can off your shoulder blades, but you're still letting your head rest in your hands. You're just sort of moving your head now, turning your head to the right, going through center, turning your head to the left, all while kind of pulling and lengthening your head and neck. So let your head kind of remain passive. Use your arms for this movement most of all. So you can go cradling right to left a couple times as long as it feels good. We're doing this for benefit, right? You know, so if it doesn't feel right, you gotta find a, some way that does feel right. Good, and then once you come back to your center after you've done both sides two or three times, let your head be heavy and push your head back into your hands eventually bringing the hands and the head to the floor. And then rest your head, let it gently roll and rock a little bit from side to side. Release any tension you have in your neck. If you want, you can use your fingers, give yourself a little massage along the sides of your neck, tops of the shoulders. Try to get everything nice and loose in there. And then also you may want to use your fingers to give yourself a little jaw massage. Right, so along the cheeks, down the jaw. Good. All right, option for Shavasana, just to be here, resting on your back in a very traditional Shavasana. But if you wanna do something different, if you wanna keep your heart, do some more of our heart opening positions, hip opening positions, you can take the soles of the feet together and then place your bolster underneath your back for Shavasana in Baddha Konasana, but souped up, reclining version, okay? So you have those choices today for your resting pose, okay? So allow yourself to just be guided by what feels right. Get into your Shavasana pose. We'll be here for about seven minutes. Final stage of class. Got some more Gayatri mantra for you to close things out. So let the body integrate all that was offered today, all this natural medicine, all these healing mudras and Acu Yoga restoring our wellness and our energy sources, our reservoir of strength, cleaning us out of any muck, rebooting us to the core. Ya 
Healing light illuminates every cell of my body, dissolving everything that should be dissolved and building up what needs to be built up again. Thank you. Thank you. Healing light illuminates every cell of my body, dissolves everything that's ready to be dissolved. Healing light illuminates every cell of my body, building up what is ready to be built up 
again. Feeling this return, return to will act of body at rest, body receiving, a body rejuvenating. We send that same power and strength of rejuvenation to our hearts and our minds, to our spirit, filling up on inhale and releasing on exhale. With this pure heart, pure mind, pure body, pure state of being. Wiggle fingers and toes. Return back to your room, back to your body. The sense of space you're in. When you are ready, roll gently to your side. Take as much time as you need. Some of you already transitioning up to a seated position, sitting with me. If you'd like to join me in a final mudra, we'll take our right hand, kind of a thumbs up position. This is called Shiva Lingam. So this is like the masculine, holding the hand open like a cup and then resting your palm inside the left open hand with the thumb up. And so you can just rest that right up against um, the solar plexus. Close your eyes. Taking a few deep, slow breaths. Spine long, the body settled. Your facial muscles relax. Masculine and feminine, feminine energies harmonizing within you. My prayer for you today is that the last 90 minutes gave you healing, it rejuvenated your body and mind and soul in ways you couldn't have imagined. And that you'll take all this newfound energy and let it last throughout your weekend, allowing the deep rest and restoration of the practice continue to unfold. Returning to these mudras and acupressure points whenever you need them to keep you clear and in harmony. So together we'll bring our palms together at heart center. Thank you all so much for joining me. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to learn so I can share with you. Namaste. Have an awesome rest of your day, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Love and blessings. <laughs> I hope you guys feel amazing. I feel so much better after that. Especially all this stuff that we did around our eyes. Oh my gosh, that did it for me. Good stuff. Oh, thanks, D. So good. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. All my light and love to you. Thank you for being part of my world.